What's up, guys? It's your boy Board Student RL back for another episode on the Enigmatica 2 SMP server. Uh, so, last episode, we set ourselves up an ME system, a very basic one, just to show you guys how it worked, and we got through some of the quests and the and applied energistics and that kind of stuff. Um, and for this episode, we're just going to continue on Applied Energistics 2 because there's some really cool stuff we can start to do with it um, that I would hopefully we can get to today. Um, between episodes, I cleared out all of these storage chests and put them all into here. You can see in here, I put my, my 60, I made another 64K drive and I made a bunch of these smaller drives because I have a bunch of um, like one-off items. Um, so the one-off items are, are kind of go into the um, the smaller storage ones because you can see they they, they allow this the same amount of types all of them pretty much um, but you know the 64k you can, you can store more of, of certain types so in order to accommodate all the different types of items in here I had to make a bunch of smaller ones but that's okay so I did that um, and I moved the chest and I believe that's all I did uh, oh, I also um, put these crystal growth accelerators here, um, as you can see. So I um, made that for my seeds. Um, and if I, I believe, actually, let's make some, I think we're going to have to make some pure crystals anyway. So let's grab, uh, I'm going to grab, I don't even know. I'm, I'm going into this semi-blind just because... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, because I would like to, to kind of do a lot of the stuff in this episode with you guys. Um, but I do think that we're probably going to need some pure crystals. So we can make some seeds and I can demonstrate to you how fast this thing is. It's pretty awesome. Um, let's make some fluix as well. Say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, one, two, three, four, sixteen, and then we are charged. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen. And we can actually we can just use our pool of water here. Should work just fine. So let's do that. Do that. Oops. Why are you doing that? Go in there. doing it aha very nice so we gotta sell some flux crystals so I'm gonna leave half of these as they are you know take the other half I'm gonna grind those up as well so we can make some pure stuff um, go grind those up um, I believe I made these yeah I did make these advanced inscribers last episode um, so I've been I was using those to make more drives if you want to see what the drive making the drives looks like let's go uh, just look at the 1k storage drive um, so it's just iron redstone some quartz glass which uh, I believe we made some of that last episode um, but then the 1k storage component so it needs all even for just 1k you need one logic processor and if we look up if for for instance we go to 4k um, storage you need the 4k component which means three of those and then a calculation processor so you can see it kind of goes it kind of starts to go up 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 and and oh i don't even know this was in here oh that's crazy yeah we won't even we won't be able to make that well i bet we could make that but it yeah you can just see look at look at this it's quite the rabbit hole a lot of processors you get so that's why i had these set up but i believe i read that last episode so here we go here's another quartz and then finally Let's get ourselves some fluix really quick. That should take less than 30 seconds. So we're just gonna let that run. There we go. Okay, so let's make some pure crystals so I can show you guys how quick this is. I believe I should have some sand in here. Yeah, sand, oops. Sand, God, I love this thing. This thing is so, so cool. Okay, yep, we got that. We got that and that very nice oh 
We had more flux dust in here, I guess. That's okay. Um, let's see. Let's watch this bad boy go. Throw those in. Uh, can we see it? You can see it doing something in there. So we're just going to toss all those in there. And while we're letting that run, let's take a look at the quest book. Um, so we're going to start on this quest tree right here because this has some of the stuff in here that I want to play around with this this episode oh, sorry I moved the mic away from my mouth um, and we'll start on this one a little bit too we'll see we'll see where we get in terms of time um, and um, we'll see how far we get um, but let's start this so we are we made some of our flux crystals um, so we need to make ourselves um, some quartz fiber some covered cables um, I think these are just for looks really uh, the dense Covered cables, smart cables, and dense smart cables. So let me explain to you guys a little bit about how Applied Energy 6.2 works. So um, basically you have the main computer and with the drives and that kind of stuff. And that's all very well and good. You can get more drives and that kind of stuff. But what's really awesome about Applied Energy 6.2 is that you can automatically send items in and out of the system um, um, with these things called buses. And I'll show you how it works. Um, but um, each bus or each storage thing, or you, you'll see what I mean, but but each device basically that you, that you connect to the ME network takes up a channel, and now each cable um, can only have a certain amount of channels. So I believe the one cable can have eight channels, and you want to use the smart cables really because they show you on them how many channels are being used, and then these dense cables can, I believe, take sixty. I think it's 32 channels. Maybe the, the smart cable 16 channels is 32 channels. Uh, either way, this this one takes a lot more, but the, it's very expensive. So let's take a look at the recipes for this. So first of all, uh, quartz fiber. Let's take a look at, at that. Uh, quartz. Oops. Fiber. So we need a little bit more. I think we're gonna need a, a decent amount of this. So let's grab a little bit more of this. Oh, we don't have that much of that. We'll just use this then. That's totally fine. Let's run over here and get ourselves even more dust, which is totally fine. Should go nice and quick. I love having an upgraded polarizer. Okay, very nice. Let's go back over here. And... I'll just make a little bit of this for now. Um, covered cable. What do we need for that? Covered cable. Yes. So we need flux crystal and wool. Ah, so we're going to have to... We're gonna have to get ourselves a wool farm of some kind going here because we're gonna need a bunch with a bunch of wool for these dense covered cables. Um, but let's look fluix. Ah, oh, crap! I keep doing that. Um, fluix. There we go. Let's put that there. This, and then we got our ME covered cable. Then. Oh, we need four of them. Crap. Uh, let's make a little bit more. We're gonna we're gonna need a bunch of this anyway, so might as well make it fluix. Uh, there we go. Good thing we made those. Very nice. Okay, covered cable. I swear we had more wool. Oh, it's the Animania wool. Let's see if we have some string. Hopefully we do. Excellent. Okay, so we can make at least a bunch of wool. Very nice. So, there's our four covered cables. And then we need dense covered cables. Dense. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, typing in the wrong place. Dense 
covered cables. Ah, it's just four of these. Wonderful. How many of these do we need? Oh, just one. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Um, Emmy Smart Cable. Let's see. Smart Cable. Smart Cable. So we just need redstone and glowstone on it, huh? Okay. Let's grab ourselves one, two, and just toss that into the ME system. Because why not? Um, so we can make our... Ah, oh, shit. Let's just make... Oh, my God. <sighs> I have to make more of this. That's okay. Here we go. Um... One of those, and one of these. And I believe, does that do it? Oh, we need four smart cables, that's okay. Um, that should give us four right there. So I believe that should be it, very nice. So we can claim 32, this is very nice. It saves us some saves us some quartz. Um, so there we go. We've got our our cables quest. So uh, I can do this later. Um, so this one and this one are the ones that we want to do. So first of all, uh, the Emmy controller is what allows channels um, to happen. And so let's read this description right here. So it isn't actually needed if you're using AT just for basic storage. It 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 supports uh, four important features, or supports four important features that may be needed. First, which is energy buffer, the vibration energy acceptor, and have a buffer. Um, enables the use of ME dense cables, which will not function without an ME controller somewhere in the ME system. Okay, yeah, so that's why we really need it. Uh, third feature is a large number of channels. Each side of the ME controller can accept up to 32 channels with the capacity of an ME dense cable. Yes, exactly. So we were right with the second one. Um, a maximum of 192 devices on a single controller. Yes. Um, the last feature is that the controller may be a multi-block construction, adding more available channels uh, per block. Yeah, so th that's what's cool about this is that you can, uh, it may be a little longer than 7, 7 cube. So the enemy control actually becomes a multi-block and you, on every surface that there that there is, you can attach more dense cables and get more channels. And this will become uh, You'll be able to understand how important this is long, uh, further down the line when we do some projects. But for now, let's just make one. Oh, of course, we don't have any of this. We need pure uh, flux crystal. What about sky stone block? Um, we need sky stone. That's okay. Uh, pure flux crystals. I, yes, we should be done with these. Look at this. You see all this? This happened relatively quickly, which is really nice. Uh, let's grab some sky stone. Let's grab a, uh, a stack. Why not? And then let's put this bad boy in here. One, two, three, four. That should be all we need. We're really only going to need one controller for now. Um, we may need more down the line um, based on more uh, the more stuff that we get, but. Um, the more the more devices that we use. Sorry. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to. I think we should we can just. Um, it should really be we should really put it in a place where it can um, split off from it easy. We should maybe put it down. What about down here somewhere. Yeah. Yes, you can tell I haven't really thought this out yet, but that's okay. Um, let me grab this. I think maybe over here would be cool. Yeah, so let's put it right there. And then we're going to grab our... We're just going to use these for now. We'll make more... I'll have to do some work between episodes to really make full use of the dense cables because we're going to need quite a bit of wool. 
but for now we're just gonna plug it in. Look, look, it makes nice little pretty little multicolors. So you can make the channels come out of the side, and if we uh, if we put a piece of dense sorry cable in here, that's what it looks like, and we can put the other ones in here. So you can see right now it's black right here, but if we connect the device up to this, um, it'll use one of the channels, which I'm hoping next quest we do, we will we will get one such device. Let me go up. Thank you. Um, so let's look. Let's get our loot chest. Nice. Um, Hmm. Yes, this is what we want. We want the Emmy interface. So let's let's take a look at the description of this too. There are the doorways to the Emmy system from machines and devices in the world. Items can be piped into it from hoppers or other means, and they will be assimilated into the um, Emmy storage cells so there is sufficient room. They can also be configured to buffer certain items, allowing hoppers to passively pull from the Emmy systems. Yeah. So this allows you to to um, uh, push items to machines and pull items from machines as well um, and for and of course from chests and storage things and all this kind of stuff um, and this is kind of the springboard for um, more devices kind of like these and we're going to use one such of these I think the goal for this episode is I'm going to use one such of these devices to basically make these bad boys into external external storage for the Emmy system but let's uh Let's not dilly daddle too long, too much longer. Let's make an interface. Interface. So we need iron and glass. We actually, yeah. Look at that. We we already. I forgot we made some of those for some of the earlier Emmy parts. One, two, three, four. Um, and then the interface. Very cool. So recursive networking. Awesome. Look at that, it's gonna give us four interfaces. So let's see if it uh, goes on to Emmy storage bus. So this is the bad boy that we want right here. Um, let's make this really quick and then I'll show you about the channels. Um, Emmy storage bus. Right there. So we're gonna need Emmy interface, a sticky piston and a piston. So if you do that, oh, I thought I could have sworn we had, do we not have slime balls? Slime, we do have slime balls. What's going on with that? Um, let's make one of those. Well, not, not just one. Let's grab some iron. Soon we will not have to run over to the two those annoying things. One, two, very nice. And then let's make a sticky piston. That's weird. I don't know why it's not letting us do that, but either way, there we go. And then we're going to do that, that, and there we go, Emmy storage bus. So. Before I, so basically what this does is when you stick the ME storage bus on something, it, it basically, um, it lets the ME system recognize that thing as external storage um, for the ME system. The most basic um, use for it, of course, is like you just stick it on a chest and the chest is external storage and the system recognizes it. But we're going to do something a lot more powerful with it in a second. But let me go down here first and show you how this guy works. Um, let's just stick an Emmy interface on it for uh, for a second. And then you can see right here, there's like a thin blue line right there. And I'm not make that sound a political reference, I promise. <laughs> um, but it shows you that one channel is being used. You can see on the tooltip too, it says one of eight channels being used. And then on the, on the dense cable, it says one of 32 channels. So if we stick another one on here, let's wait for it to come online. And then two channels and two channels right here. So yeah, so pretty straightforward how that works. That means interface. So um, when you put uh, items right here, it basically, or I think if you put them in an in a random item in one of these slots, the system will stock it with, um, oh, no, it just allows, uh, what's this? Blocking mode and, and ignore the contents of the target inventory. Yeah, well, well, as we use these, I'll show you how they work. But um, 
just know for now they they can suck items in and push them out if you if you configure them correctly. Um, we're gonna take this down, um, because guess I haven't been able to tell. I'm a little tired today, so I think that we're gonna try to wrap this up quickly. But I would like to finish the goal of of making this into external storage. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open that loot chest first. <laughs> we got another railgun. Incredible. We're just gonna toss that in there. Um. Let's make this an external storage. So what we need first of all is we need to connect all these together. It would be very tedious to um, put a storage bus on all on each individual drawer because that would of course yield a ton of resources. So instead, we're gonna make something called a drawer controller. It's like a drawer controller right there. Let's see how much stuff that we had. So basically, you can interact with the entire bank of connected controllers, and the storage bus will rec recognize it as such. So let's grab a diamond, toss that in there. Um, so we got that. Let's make a redstone torch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, Let's make, oops, need one more, one more of these bad boys, and there we go, another comparator, and then we're going to need a drawer, oh come on, what is this about, yeah, give me that, and then we've got our drawer controller, okay, so pretty simple, all we need to do is just dig this out and stick that right there and then now every you can't really Ooh, sorry um you can't really see it but they're all connected together now but you will be able to see this what i'm about to do so i'm gonna have to rip up a little bit of the floor to do this but that's okay we've designed this this building relatively well i kind of try to design it with a little bit of foresight because I knew that we'd, we'd eventually get to get into a place where we'd be doing a lot of wiring. Let's dig all this up. You can see, ah, oh, hate it when I fall down like that. Um, let's grab our dev null. Let's throw our calamari away for, there we go. There we go. Ah, oh, for goodness sakes. Um, Oops. So now we have access to the cables. And I believe, uh, I wonder if we can connect it. Let's see if we can. Um, if we connect some of the smart cable to this, we may be able to see how many are being used. Zero of eight. Okay, nice. So we, we, we will be able to take this around here so let's take our storage bus right here and we're gonna whack it on this is the face in the right way yeah so you can see this little nubbin on on the end uh, will connect to the cable so we click on this um, uh, this little thing over here is quite annoying I wonder if we can get rid of it no clear partition storage input output Report inaccessible items. Um, insert only bi-directional. That should be able, so we can pull items out of it and we can um, put items into it. So it'll act correctly as external storage. So I believe that should do it. Let's check our, our channels over here. Yep, one of one of eight. So then let's go over here and let's look in the ME system and see if it recognizes it as, hmm. Maybe, let's uh, sort by number of items. Yes, is what we want, so let's see. So it sees glowstone, oh, I think it did it. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we did it. We got it on the first try. That's pretty amazing. So this is what's nice is about using the compacting drawers is you can just pull nuggets directly out of this. Um, so let's do it, let's, let's run a little test just to see if this worked. Um, let's pull a stack of copper out of here so we can see 352 
in the ME system. And if we put it back in here, we have 416 in here. Let's check to make sure we have 416 in here. Um, block of copper. Oh, it's going to make me do math, isn't it? Uh, that's fine. I'm just pulling up my calculator. So blocks of copper, 46. Um, times 9 is 414 plus 2, 416. Okay, excellent. So this worked exactly how we wanted it to. So basically now we can pull items in and out of here at will. Um, and uh, we can just slap them into the ME system and they'll go into the drawer. So that is absolutely wonderful. Uh, let's button the floor back up because we should be done back there, at least for now. Um, eventually we're gonna connect everything to the uh, the ME controllers so that we can we can take advantage of the full number of channels but right now just for our our intents and purposes it's working um let's grab let's see marble Eek. there we go just want to want to make sure we put this back this is kind of ugly too we'll figure something else with, with this later um we're we're at 26 minutes i think that's a good stopping place i wanted this to be kind of a shorter episode anyways um, let's put our stuff in here, just to make sure it all stores correctly. Oh, that's so nice. Now, now this is really, truly exactly what I, what I wanted, because now I don't have to run to these annoying things anymore. And, e and I'll even, I think, let's, let's try to test it out. Let's see if this, if it'll let me shift click items in. Let me look for a, a recipe. Um, oh, look at that. We can even claim this. Nice, more food. That's exactly what we want. Um, let me see if there's a, a quick quest we can do in here. That will let me craft something. What is this? A P2P tunnel? Um, no. Uh, export and import buses. Um, so, export and import buses. I can explain about this real quick and, and craft them. And it'll hopefully let me do the shift click stuff but so it's very simple import bus pulls items from an attached inventory or machine into the ME system and you can blacklist and whitelist it to kind of like a, the pipes on the uh, um, uh, the, the in thermal expansion and then the export bus pushes items into an inventory machine uh, it, it must be told which items to export and how many you should try to push at a time so yeah, um, you can you can kind of see the possibilities start to get pretty crazy in terms of automation um, with this. Oh, there's so many guys out there. Um, but let's try to craft these really quick um, and see if our shift clicking works. Yeah, I don't care. We're not going to make these. But the important thing is that the shift click worked and it, it pulls the items out of the drawers and into the crafting inventory. So yeah, I'm very happy with that because that's just a, a quick little, uh, little delve into AE2 and... Um, we got ourselves to upgrade the uh, our storage a little bit, but thank you guys very much for joining me on this sort of sleepy episode. I'm sorry about that; it's a little late at night, but I wanted to get this episode out to you guys. So, so sometimes you just gotta make sacrifices. But thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you guys very shortly. I'll get up first thing tomorrow and, and record another episode. We're gonna. We're gonna do some really cool stuff with AE2, you'll see. But thank you guys for joining me. Uh, peace out.